When COVID-19 hit and schools began to close, librarian Catherine McGinnis wasn't sure what her role was or how she could continue to help her students and still feel connected. But one student's creativity sparked an idea and now Catherine, along with Casanova students, are working to create their own little piece of history as it's happening. She joins us this morning along with senior Jonathan Ben to tell us more. Good morning, Catherine and Jonathan. Good morning. So, Good morning. So Catherine, how exactly did this project come to be? Well, it it really all started when I received that poem from my third grader. Mm -hmm. um, you know, librarians' roles are, are changing every day and we teach STEM and technology and so many um, different subjects now. We're not just the librarians that check out books. So when all of this started, I was seeing librarians teach math lessons and history lessons and even doing Zoom meetings at you know, seven o'clock at night just to do uh, like, uh, you know, reading bedtime stories to their kids that maybe had, uh, you know, parents working long shifts in the hospital. So when I was seeing all of those amazing things happen, I was thinking, you know, what is my role in this whole thing? Cause I, I just felt disconnected with my students. So when I received that poem uh, from my third grader um, and she called it, I am, and she talks about, you know, I am happy that I get to spend time with my family. I am sad, I am lonely. And I was just so inspired and I thought she just, you know, these young kids understand so much more than you give them credit for. Mm -hmm. And after receiving that poem that was sent to me by her classroom teacher, cause she completed it for a different school project. I just thought that there's other kids out there that you know, really need to share their voices. So I thought that this would be a great way to not only bring our community together, but also give those students voices. Well, and speaking of giving students voices or a voice, Jonathan, you're one of those students, a graduating senior, if you will. And, you know, you have decided to share your graduation speech as part of this special project. So tell us a little bit about why you wanted to do that and how it makes you feel to sort of be part of a, a time capsule or a piece of history like this. Well, that's what I'm excited about is that this is very much so a time capsule where in the late next couple of years, we'll look back at it and say, wow, this is, we really went through this. Mm -hmm. uh, but in my speech, I really talk about like how the class of 2020, we came together and kept moving forward and we had each other's backs and I talk about the teachers and how they had our backs as well um, it's just it's a I, I loved it because I was able to talk about how we stayed together through all of this and I talked about like in an elementary school um, where we were just those little kids looking up to the seniors and we didn't have that normal senior year mm -hmm. that we all kind of looked forward to but um, yeah, it, it's just, it's nice to be able to have that set and kind of like what you said, a time capsule um, where we can look at it and say, wow, like that's much different than many other senior speeches <laughs> where they talk about our senior breakfast was so much fun. Our senior nights, nights were so much fun. So yeah, it's great. Jonathan, how does it make you feel to know that you'll be part of history or even thinking down the line from now, like 10 years from now, what do you think you'll feel when you open up that time capsule? Well, I'm, what I'm excited for is like all my friends, we talk about, we think of the Spanish flu or historical things that we've read about in textbooks. And we just think we're, we're part of history. This is like really happening. And our kids are gonna be learning about it someday. Um, and when I look back on giving the class speech and it's totally different than what my kid is hearing at their graduation, it's just, it's going to be a good feeling for myself because I realize we still stuck, to, we still stuck together during all of it. So it's going to be great. Yeah. You know, Catherine, you've received quite a few submissions. Uh, are you still accepting submissions and where can, you know, parents and kids get, where will they be able to get this book? Yeah, so um, we're still collecting submissions and we're extending the deadline until uh, this coming Monday. So if students in kindergarten through 12th grade still want to make a submission, they absolutely can. We're also accepting uh, submissions from teachers as well. Um, 
and we're going to collect all these pieces and we're going to self-publish a book that will be available in all three of our school libraries and then we also um, are hoping to share a copy with every student that makes a submission uh, of course free of charge and everything like that mm. and then down the road we're also hoping that uh, maybe we can make more physical copies rather than just have them in the libraries for um, for uh, distribution so mm. it's yeah. exciting that's that is really exciting and I think it's a great way to sort of bring everyone together, right? I mean, as Jonathan said, he's, he is still a part of history, even if it looks a little different this year. Right. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much for joining us, guys. Lovely to chat with you. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for having us. Of course. And listen, if you'd like to learn more about this project, you can visit Burton Street Library online at burtonstreetlibrary.weebly.com.